Hi everybody, welcome to part two of my Mile A Minute Loop Stitch Braid braid Baby Blankets. Uh, last week, if uh, you've been following along, I showed you how to create this loop stitch braid technique, which uh, someone rightly pointed out, it's very similar to hairpin lace, um, but instead it's completely done in crochet using the loop stitch. So if you've been following along and you've been making your blanket too, you're probably sick of the loop stitch as much as I am. Um, but I finally finished my blanket and it is a square shape and it measures about 25 inches to about 30 inches by 30 inches so around about that size and I've been using the lovely yarns by Paintbox which is exclusive to Love Knitting Love Crochet and I've got enough here probably to make another blanket as well so I think I've used about half of each ball and the colours that I've been using for this blanket if you want to make it exactly the same uh, it starts off with dark aubergine on the left hand side and then we've got a pansy purple I think then you've got dusty lilac it could be the other way around dusty lilac then pansy purple I'm not quite sure um, and then you've got uh, blush pink and then at the right on the end there we've got peach orange as well so what we're going to be doing in part two in this video is we're going to be finishing off the edging up the top here where we're just going to be securing our finishing loop braids we're going to be creating a border along these rough edges and i'm going to show you how to just loop stitch braid the edges as well and then we should be finished so we're going to be using uh we're going to be needing a pair of scissors a yarn a tapestry needle we're going to be using the same hook size that we've been using for the blanket that's a four millimeter g crochet hook okay so let's begin <laughs> As you can see here what I've done is I've secured the final set of four loops on each loop braid to the center of the column so we're going to be doing that for all of them along the edge where it finishes your loop braids and when they're facing this direction because they'll need to be secured so so what we did is we used our tail end just to secure that last set of four loops like so and if your knot is right near the edge you can leave the knot in but this one's quite loose bit of a gap so i'm going to undo my knot and hopefully you've just done little single knots so it's easy to undo and we're going to keep that's a little bit far away as well so i'm just going to pull that out of there and undo this knot as well so i'm just going to use my needle so there we go so that's just threading through this one here now like I said in my last video you need to make sure that the final set of loops um, depending on what they're facing they need to be sewn in this side you don't want to end up sewing it the same side as this one here so if your loops are coming from the left you need to sew it to the right and if your loops are coming from the right you need to sew it to the left so we're going to do two at a time here and this blanket's quite big now it's hard to fit on camera Okay, so I've threaded that through, used that tail end and I've threaded it through my last four loops there. I'm just going to sew it to the middle here, to the back. There we go, pull that nice and tight and then I'm going to thread it through these four loops as well. Make sure I'm going for the loops properly. So gone through those four loops as well and pull that over and I'm going to sew into the middle again here. Okay, so then they're nice and tight, both facing the opposite direction of where they're coming from. So and then we just need to hide our tail ends. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sew down here, sew down a little bit more. I'm just going to come back in the opposite direction. So that feels nice and secure. And then I'm just going to get my scissors and I'm going to trim the excess down. And there we go, we've secured our end tail loop stitches 
in like so. So I'm going to do that all along this top edge, securing all these loops. And I'm also going to tie in any extra tail ends as well. I've just got some extra ones here, which I'm just going to sew in like I just did here. And then I'll come back and show you how to do the edging. Okay, so I've finished tying in all my tail ends. I've done it for the other edge as well. And that took me about, took me about 20 minutes to tie in all my tail ends. So it's not too bad. And um, what we're going to do now is, so all these edges are nice, nice and neat. These are all secured now in the middle, facing the right direction. So you want your loops facing the right direction. And what we're going to do now is we're going to, whoops, not the camera. Okay, and what we're going to do now is we're going to make sure that our loop stitch are facing upwards because we want to work these edges in the same direction as these loop braids. And all we do for the edges is we're going to take four of our loops on the edge. Like so, we're going to take four loops of the edge. Then we're going to take another four. One, two, three, four. And we are going to bring those four here through these four. So we're just going to keep them separate. Again, you can put your finger through the loops like you did for the normal loop braiding and bring those four through the first four. And then you've got these four on your on your hook and then we're going to grab the next four. One, two, three, four. And then we do the same thing again. Put our finger through those and bring those four through these four. And you can see it creates like half a braid up the edge. So it matches this edge. We're going to do that all the way up. You need to make sure that they're facing the same direction as these loop braids. continue that up the edge and then we'll do it for the other side but you need to make sure that when you do it for the other side you don't turn your blanket around you need to make sure they're facing the right direction as well and it creates this kind of edge soft edge and it gets rid of the loops So just coming up to the end, last four. Again, it should divide into four equally. Don't worry if you've got three at the end or five at the end, just pull those through as normal. It won't make a huge difference. And there we go. So if I can show you how that looks. If I put this down, this blanket's too big to show on camera. <laughs> there we go. So it looks like that along the edge. So it creates like a half a braid and creates a nice neat edge for your blanket. What we need to do though is we need to secure this one at the end. So what we're going to do, should have left a tail in there actually, so I've made a fatal error of judgment there. But all we can do is get a little bit of similar coloured yarn and just sew that into place. So if you have a tail end, you can use that, that's great. But I've already sewn mine in like an idiot. <laughs> So I'm just going to get a little extra bit of yarn and just use this to sew this into place. And just do the same thing you did for when securing these ones here. So I'm just going to I'm going to sew into the material to the crochet first. And I'm going to put that big bit of a tail end. I'm going to put that through my last four loops. and sew this into place. And this end this in a bit neater. Back in the opposite direction, that should be sufficient. There we go. Okay, 
so that's the edge finished for this side and that's secured in then what we need to do is the same for the other side but we need to make sure that our braids are facing the same direction so they're going up like these braids so we need to make sure we don't turn this round we need to just move it over and do it to this edge in the same direction as well so the dark edge and it's exactly the same thing we just take four loops to begin one two three four and then take another four one two three four we pull those four through these four And when you've got those four, we take the next four, and it's the same thing again. We just pull those through, those four. We're going to do that all the way up. So grab the next four loops and bring that through, and it just creates the same edge this side as well, and they're facing the same direction. So I'm going to do that all the way up to the top, and then secure it at the top. It's probably a good idea to actually do these edges before you sew in your tail ends, but not that it hugely matters. Okay. Okay, so I finished that edge as well. Move the camera, it's probably easier. And you can see it's like a half braid, it's facing the same direction. And I've secured the last four in the same way we've done all the other ones. And what we're going to do now, we've done those edges, but if you want to, you can leave it there if you're, if you're fed up with doing it and you want to just leave it there. It does look just as nice having this edge along here, but if you want to, you can add an extra edge along here, which I shall do now down here. It's entirely up to you. You might just, you might like this shape at the end. But what I'm going to do is just I'm going to do some fan shapes uh, along the edge, which will just square it off. So we're going to do that. And I'm going to do it in the, um, the dark purple. I think we'll set that off. Um, yeah, I think I'll use the dark purple. So let's begin. Actually, on second thoughts, what I might do, rather than use the dark purple, which might look a bit strange on such a light colour this end, I might use the central purple colour, the one that's in the middle. So we've got five colours in total. So if I use the middle one, it'll look like it's flowing out either edge. So I think I might use this, this colour. And this will also show up better on camera. So I'm going to take this colour and we're going to join it turn this upside down we're going to join it this end in the purple so let's refocus the camera okay so we're going to start at the dark purple edge um, we don't have any proper stitches to work into so we're just going to have to do this as neatly as we can we're going to work the fans into the center of our loop braids our first two loop braids here but what we first want to do that is just to join our yarn on this edge we don't have a proper stitch to work into so literally just put your hook into anywhere just anywhere that's on the corner and we're going to take our yarn and rejoin our yarn in this corner we're just going to secure that with a little chain one okay, okay and then what we're going to do is we're going to find the center of these two loops these group of four loops okay so these first two that are joined together um, we're going to put a hook into the, the easiest thing to do is to find put your finger through the first four loops so find so there we go it's going for the first four and then you need to go through these four here so it might be easier to use your hook just to bring those up and put that over your finger in the same direction so now you've found the center of these first two groups of four loops and that's where we're going to put our hook and we're going to yarn over twice because we're going to do a treble so this is in US terminology so in UK terminal terminology a treble is going to be a double treble so wrap the yarn around your hook twice put it through that gap and whenever you do a double crochet stitch or bigger you just yarn over pull through two until you get to the end so we yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two and that does a treble we're going to do two of those to start in there so wrap the yarn around your hook 
twice again, we'll do another one and go into the same gap. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two for our second treble. Then we're going to do two double crochets. We just wrap the yarn around our hook once and do two doubles in the same gap. Double crochet. So one and another one. Two. So two double crochets. Then we do two trebles again. So wrap the yarn around your hook twice. Do two trebles. That's one and another one. Okay, so we've got two trebles, two double crochets, two trebles, all in that little gap there, which is going through those first four loops and those first four, four loops on either side. Then what we want to do is we want to find the center of the next strip. So there's our next loop braid. We need to find the center of this strip here, and there's no stitches to work into, so you're just going to have to put your hook in somewhere nice and neat. And in there, we're just going to do a little slip stitch. So bring the arm through and do a little slip stitch. Neat in the mine. Okay. Then we need to find the next center of the next four. And because it starts this side, I'm going to put my finger through this side first, through those four. And then using my hook, or maybe another hook, if I can use my little yarn needle. Just going to put it through these four, put that over my finger as well. There we go. So I know that's going through both of those first four loops. And in there we just do the same thing again. We'll start off with a treble. In there. Do two trebles. Two trebles, two double crochets. And then two trebles again. Okay. So it looks a little something like that. And then we're going to find the centre of the next strip and slip stitch into there. Somewhere nice and neat. Okay, and that is neatening off the edge. So I'm going to do that all the way across. Now we're going to find the next centre of our next one. So the first one starts this side. The first set of four loops is this side. So put my finger through those four. Then find the next four. Four. I just put my finger over, put them over my finger like that. Now we found the centre. So we do. We start off with two trebles. Pull through two. Pull through two. Pull through two. Two trebles. Two double crochets. two trebles. Or in UK terminology it'd be two double trebles, two trebles, two double trebles. Okay. So you end up with six stitches in each by the end of that. Okay so I'm going to do this all the way across then I'm going to find the centre of the next strip and slip stitch into there and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Okay. You can see it's levelling it off nice and neat. Okay, so I'm just going up to the last one to do my last treble. And then I'm going to finish up with finding the the edge. Rather than the centre, I'm going to find the edge, the corner of the blanket, and I'm just going to slip stitch into there. To finish, and then I'm going to cut my yarn. 
we'll stop there. Let's cut my yarn and pull that through and then we're going to sew in that tail end but I'll just show you what the edging looks like. So if I can zoom out a little bit, a bit better. So then it just creates a straight edge. Like I said, you don't have to do this. You can just leave it bumpy if you want to. But this just creates a straighter edge along here. And if you want to, you can do exactly the same technique to the other side, just joining in the corner and then finding the center of your loops and working your two trebles, two double and two treble crochets and then slip stitching in the center of the next strip. You can do that all the way across there if you want to. But I actually think I prefer it just like this bumpy edge like this. So I'm probably just going to keep it like this for me so and that's about it for this tutorial i hope you've managed to follow along i hope you've given it a go and like i said i've used i've been using the uh, new paint box yarns from um paint box they're exclusive to love knitting and love crochet i'll put links in the description below if you want to go check that out and like i said the colors i've been using are let's just get them out first Oops, it's upside down. <laughs> there we go. So the colours I've been using are the dark aubergine, the pansy purple, the dusty lilac, the blush pink and the peach orange like so. And I'll do a written version of this pattern as well, which I'll put on my website and blog. And so if you want to go check that out. Um, but you don't have to use these yarns if you don't want to. You can use any yarns that you like. These are a DK light wool stitch weight yarn so it's a yarn weight of three but you can use a thicker yarn you can use a thinner yarn um just uh, use the right hook suitable for the yarn that you're using so if you're using a thicker yarn you may want to use a bigger hook and vice versa a thinner yarn with a thinner hook it'll create exactly the same technique but i hope you enjoyed that tutorial hope you managed to follow along and i'll see you soon for some more crochet fun thanks for watching guys bye